this video, we're going to look at definitions of acids and bases. The definition most commonly used in organic chemistry is a Bronsted-Lowry acid and a Bronsted-Lowry base. A Bronsted-Lowry acid refers to a proton donor, and a Bronsted-Lowry base refers to a proton acceptor. So let's really quickly review exactly what a proton is referring to. So in the most common isotope of hydrogen, there's one proton in the nucleus, and there's an electron somewhere outside of our nucleus. So here's a very simple picture of a hydrogen atom. This is a neutral hydrogen atom. It's neutral because the positive and the negative charge cancel each other out, so there's no overall charge. If we were to somehow take away that electron, right, we would be left with just a proton. So we took away a negative charge, right, so it's no longer balanced, and so now we have H plus. We have the positively charged nucleus of a hydrogen atom, which consists of only a proton. So H plus is equal to a proton, and so this is very important to understand when you're looking at organic chemistry mechanisms and a proton is being exchanged. So let's go ahead and, and do one of those mechanisms. So a very simple general chemistry reaction. Right, you could start off with water here. So the dot structure for water, two lone pairs of electrons on my oxygen. And I'm going to show water reacting with HCl. So we have HCl, and my dot structure for HCl would look like this. Now in the bond between the hydrogen and the chlorine, one of those electrons came from hydrogen, and one of those electrons uh, came from chlorine, like that. So in this mechanism, HCl is going to be our Bronsted-Lowry acid. So this is going to be our Bronsted-Lowry acid. It's going to donate a proton, and water is going to accept that proton. So water is going to be our Bronsted-Lowry base, like that. Let's go ahead and get some more room here. And so in this mechanism, a lone pair of electrons on the oxygen are going to take this proton from the HCl. So if it's just taking the proton, right, the electron that hydrogen have is going to, is, had is going to be left behind on the chlorine. So if I go ahead and highlight that electron, right, this electron in blue here, this is the one that came from the hydrogen atom in the dot structure. So you could think about it as being this electron right here. And so if I go ahead and draw the product of this acid-base reaction, right, so the oxygen is going to pick up a proton, so the oxygen is going to pick up a hydrogen here in the dot structure and also a positive charge, and there's still a lone pair of electrons left on that oxygen. So you could think about the oxygen being positively charged because it's picking up a proton, or you could think about this oxygen as having a plus one formal charge if you know how to calculate formal charge already. So the other products would be, we would, have, uh, we would have Cl over here, which used to have three lone pairs of electrons, but it's going to pick up an, an extra lone pair here, right? So the electron in blue, the electron that used to belong to hydrogen, or the, or the electron that hydrogen brought to the dot structure, now ends up on chlorine to form the chloride anion. Right, so you could think about the chlorine picking up an extra electron to have it to having a negative one charge, or you could think about the chloride as having a negative one formal charge. So either one works. And so we've shown the transfer of one proton uh, from HCl to water to form H3O plus and Cl minus. And we know that HCl, of course, is a is a strong acid. So technically these reactions are at equilibrium, um, and, but for an extremely strong acid like HCl, the equilibrium lies extremely far to the right. And so I'm only going to draw an extremely small arrow in here going back to the, to the left. So the reverse reaction is possible, although, although highly unlikely. So HCl is, is pretty much completely dissociated in practice. But let's think about the reverse reaction occurring. So if H3O plus and, HC, and, and Cl minus reacted, Right, the H3O plus would be donating a proton this time. So this would be this would be my acid, right? So the H3O plus would be an acid, and the Cl minus would be a base. The Cl minus would pick up a proton to form HCl, and uh, the H3O plus would lose a proton to form H2O. And so, in in practice, of course, this doesn't really occur. But it's important to think about uh, acid-base reactions being at equilibrium. And we can also think about conjugate acid-base pairs, right? So over here on the 
left, HCl was functioning as a Bronsted-Lowry acid. Once it donates its proton, you're left with a conjugate base, which is Cl minus. And so HCl and Cl minus are a conjugate acid-base pair. They differ in, in terms of only one proton, one H plus. Another conjugate acid-base pair would be, would be water over here on the left, which is function as a Bronsted-Lowry base. And then over here on the right, H3O plus is the conjugate acids. So H2O and H3O plus are also a conjugate acid-base pair. Again, there's one proton difference uh, between those two. So the stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base. That's one of those general chemistry principles. And, so, and since HCl is extremely strong, that means the chloride anion is going to be extremely weak, right? So Cl minus is an extremely weak base. It's not really going to take any protons from H3O plus. If it did, that would mean that you would reform the HCl. And so the HCl wouldn't be as strong of an acid as you anticipate. So since HCl is extremely strong, Cl minus is a, is a weak base. Let's look at another definition for acids and bases that's sometimes used in organic chemistry, and this is the Lewis definition. So a Lewis acid is an electron pair acceptor, and a Lewis base is an electron pair donor. A good way to remember this is uh, Lewis acid, right, is an electron pair acceptor. So we have the two A's. A Lewis base is an electron pair donor. If you take this D here, right, and you just reflect it, and you, and, and you get a B, a lowercase b, which of course would refer to a base. And so that's just a quick way of remembering which is which here for your definitions. Let's go ahead and look at, an, at a reaction um, where you have to use the definition of Lewis acid and base. I'm going to go ahead and draw a, a cyclic ether here, so with two lone pairs of electrons on my oxygen. And then I'm going to draw a dot structure for borane. So BH3 is borane, and so there is my dot structure. Something a little bit strange about the dot structure of borane, right? It doesn't have an octet around it. It has six electrons around it. But it can form an octet because of its location on the periodic table. And so that makes borane extremely reactive. If you think about the hybridization of the boron atom right here, right, it has, has a uh, it would be uh, sp2 hybridized, right? So this would be sp2 hybridized, meaning that the boron has a free p orbital, right? So there's an empty, there's an empty orbital here, and this is what makes borane extremely reactive. As a matter of fact, it will react with itself sometimes. Right? But if we think about if we think about this reaction right here, uh, the the borane, right, the boron has an empty orbital, and so it's capable of accepting a pair of electrons. And this ether over here in the right has, has a pair of electrons that it can donate, right? So I could think about this pair of electrons, right, filling the empty orbital and forming a bond with the boron atom. So let's go ahead and draw this acid-base reaction here. And so we have our oxygen. Right, one lone pair of electrons is still on our oxygen. Right, the other lone pair formed a bond with the boron, and the boron is still attached to some hydrogens here, like that. All right, if you already know your formal charges, right, you can calculate a formal charge of plus one on the oxygen here, and a formal charge of negative one on the boron, like that. And so this is technically an acid-base reaction, and since, uh, since this ether over here on the left, right, donated a pair of electrons, so this must be our Lewis base right here, an electron pair donor. The borane accepted a pair of electrons, and so this must be our Lewis acid. So Lewis acid and base definition comes up occasionally in organic chemistry, and it is important to understand. But the most important definition is definitely Bronsted-Lowry, so make sure you understand that concept extremely well.